Good morning, everyone. It's always a, a little odd uh, doing these uh, not in person because I can only hear me and I can't very well see you, but I appreciate you being here today. And I hope the information that's shared with you by staff uh, is helpful as we get ready for open enrollment in May. As communications build, we wanted to take time to talk about what's going on in the plan, what new innovations there are, and how my office is working on your behalf and on our members' behalf to get the best possible coverage at the lowest possible price. Partnership has been a win-win. Our office really values the partnership that we formed, and it's been a great to see the success of the program. And we've been able to reach into communities across the state and share some great ideas and innovation and long-term savings opportunities. Some really exciting new programs that you'll hear about today that build on that work that we're already doing. In particular, I want to highlight the Health Enhancement Program. Health Enhancement Program, whether it's when we started it with state employees or when you implemented it locally, um, is a little bit difficult at first for folks to get used to the rhythm and the whys of why they need to participate. In short order, people tend to understand that. And now we're part of a very large health program, a very large value-based insurance design that is being modeled, there is a model, and is being uh, replicated in other parts of the country by other states and other large communities. So I think that's something for us to be proud of. One of the new iterations um, of what's going on in the plan is that we're developing these networks of distinction and identifying centers of excellence. And this is a process that is um, about putting quality first. So, you know, traditionally um, there was a approach, an approach that started with cost and then try to drive people to the low cost provider. But we all know that the low cost provider is not always the best provider. And the long term cost of going to a low quality provider um, is that it can be more expensive. So we're starting with quality and we're having great conversations with hospitals, hospital systems, provider groups about how we can highlight the good work that they're doing and how we can really encourage our members uh, to head in their direction when they need things like joint replacements. I also wanted to bring us together because the partnership plan has become a bit of a political football. Um, I've, I'm, I imagine you've noticed. And frankly, some of the rhetoric, rhetoric that's being thrown around um, is not only inaccurate, but it's reckless. There'll be time at the end of the presentation today uh, for you to ask your questions directly. And, you know, Bernie and Josh and Tracy and Alex and others are here and they'll be on the call to the bitter end to answer those questions for you. But I wanted to directly say to you that some of the information uh, that's being peddled is frankly just wrong. The partnership plan has a positive MLR. We know the history of years one and two when you're standing up a new plan, but you'll remember, and some of you were not very happy, when we had to seek permission from the legislature to do a little over under on counties uh, because of the expense of care in various counties around the state. We've built these programs for long-term savings. The healthier we can keep our members, who tend to be with us for a very long time, the more aggressively we can keep down costs now, and we'll have compounding long-term benefit. There's tremendous oversight of this program. It's entertaining for me to hear like, how do we know what goes into this and what are they doing behind the curtain? There isn't a more transparent health plan in the state and oversight um, everywhere I look, frankly, there's oversight between the auditors who look at the books for our agency uh, between Siegel's auditing uh, and looking at both rate setting and trend and all of the things that we need and then certifying our documents to say that they are true. And you know as well as I do that you don't get an auditor's certification easily or if you're putting out misinformation. Open Connecticut, I mean, th this is a place where folks can go and see every dollar uh, that goes flowing out of our office. 
Um, and the other thing I had to explain to legislators recently was um, there are documents that have come across my desk that may not say partnership or may not say health plan at the top, but in them are embedded budget information that includes both of our programs. And I have to attest on those documents that are going to the bond rating agencies and are instructive to the market when we put bonds in the market, that the information contained there is true, it has been audited, and that under the pain of perjury or the risk of perjury, I am saying these are the true and accurate documents of the state. So if anybody thinks for half a second that I would put myself at risk at that level uh, to move a policy agenda forward, um, well, that's just, it's silly. I saw some lawmakers as well hold a press conference recently where they were complaining about their coverage. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't hear a lot of complaints from our members about the coverage. Our benefits are the envy of many people and our programs, the contracts, the costs are envied by some folks in the private marketplace. We've been able to do great things around cost control and about, well, about wellness enhancement because of the size of our group and it's growing. There are documents related to everything that we're talking about today on the Comptroller's website. And so if you haven't downloaded them or if you haven't looked, including that certified document around the health of partnership, um, it's all there um, if you want to take a look for yourself. Um, I'm thankful for the hard work that our office is doing and how we can extend the benefit of that to our partners. Not to overuse that word, but it's important. Right? This isn't just a take it or leave it proposition. This is a taking feedback and trying to improve constantly what we're doing. And I thank you, uh, those who have reached out and had uh, concerns or ideas uh, that we've been able to, uh, to implement um, or at least look at um, as a possible enhancement to the plan going forward. More groups are coming in uh, for July 1st, and there's more to follow later in the year. Um, membership at this point is held pretty steady um, and i think that's testament to the fact that we recognize and you recognize that we are in this together that we have a common interest in serving our constituents and our employees are the mechanism we use to do that so um, our employees aren't just numbers on a spreadsheet there are our friends, there are our neighbors, uh, the representatives of government that interact with our taxpayers the most. I'm really proud of the work we're doing together to keep them healthy on the job and doing what they do best, and that is serving the taxpayers of Connecticut. So again, thank you for your time. I apologize for the very long intro, but at this point I'll turn it over to Bernie and he'll get into the nuts and bolts on what's going in, on in the plan. And then again, at the very end, there'll be opportunity for you to ask your questions. So thank you. All right, thank you very much, Kevin, for that great introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining this morning's partnership presentation. Again, my name is Bernie Slowick, and I have been working on the partnership plan 2.0 since it was implemented in late of 2015. Um, it's nice to see a lot of those familiar names in the audience. Uh, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping before we get started. Uh, this presentation will be added to our website at osc.ct.gov backslash CT partner. Also, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use the chat function as we have a moderator uh, reviewing the questions and we will address them at the end. Uh, during the status update, uh, next slide please, I will be presenting on plan updates as well as what's new this year. My counterpart on a partnership, Alex Humble, will be reviewing the benefits update, and Betsy Nozel, our communication specialist, will be going over member support. Next slide. Partnership 2.0 membership has grown substantially in the last few years, as Kevin mentioned. As of today, uh, we have 142 groups enrolled, which totals almost 60,000 members statewide. These groups range in size of just one member to just over 8,000. We have a wide variety of groups enrolled, including towns, boards of ed, housing authorities, transit authorities, health districts, fire departments, libraries, and a lake authority. 
As most of you are aware, full groups are automatically accepted into the plan, while partial groups are subject to demographic review by way of their census. Unlike with typical insurance carriers, we do not review claims as part of the acceptance process. Next slide. As a plan feature, uh, partnership groups have access to a variety of services specific to this plan. There's a dedicated team at the comptroller's office, including myself, Alex Humble and Diane Regia to help with customer needs, as well as several managers and extended staff that are constantly involved in the partnership program. You have a specific customer service team at the carrier level that only handles state and partnership accounts. Those would include Anthem for your medical, UHC or United Healthcare for groups who added our Medicare Advantage plan, CVS Caremark for pharmacy, Cigna for those groups who added our dental and vision plans, and Care Management Solutions, also known as WellSpark, who manage the HEP or Health Enhancement Program. Another feature of our plan is the COBRA administration. Most groups have elected to have Co Anthem administer the COBRA plan for their members, and this is one less thing they have to worry about administratively. Finally, the benefits and costs make labor management negotiations easier. Our benefits are in place until 2027, unless legislation opens it up earlier, and are negotiated by our CBAC or our State Employee Bargaining Agent Coalition. Therefore, we are not changing our benefits each year, which gives employees and employers peace of mind. Our rich benefit design is also attractive as it typically meets or exceeds current bargaining contract language of equal to or better than. In addition to the benefits, the partnership plan rate increases have been consistently lower than trend and have actually averaged under 6% for the last five years. Plan financials. The partnership plan is in strong financial position and projects to be so in the future. On the left, we have a grid showing a premium versus claims breakdown by plan year. We included the number of groups as of the end of the plan year to show growth from year to year. Per this breakdown, the medical loss ratio has not improved as more groups are added to the plan. For plan year 2021 to 2022, we are projecting a loss ratio of just under 97% and expect our membership to grow. To date, we already have eight confirmed groups joining the plan as of July 1st of 2021. On July 1st of this year, all regional rate adjustments will be fully implemented, which means that future renewals will be the same for new and existing groups within their region. Our state population health plan typically runs at a 97 to 98% medical loss ratio. Also, the fiscal year 2020 administrative costs are projected to be 2.3%, which would leave a 1.1% surplus. Next slide, please. There are some cost saving, saving measures uh, that you may not be aware of. The state has direct contracting with hospitals and providers, and there is an emphasis on high cost areas in Fairfield County. We have several partnership groups in that area, and we are working diligently to lower costs for services. There is aggressive contracting for private partners like carriers, consultants, and vendors, as well as a frequent competitive bidding process. Also, the state has implemented programs focused on preventive care, emergency room avoidance, where patient service costs are very high, and chronic disease management. Our health enhancement program is a leader in the value-based insurance design model, and several groups have expressed interest in implementing a similar design in their own health plan. With that said, I will hand it over to Alex Humble, who will be presenting the benefits update. Thank you, Bern. And hi everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Alex Humble. I started working with Partnership in 2018 when the plan really started to grow. Um, I'm also the one who sends you all of the updates for Partnership through email, so if I haven't met you in person, we have certainly chat through email. Now today I'm going to be going over a couple different programs, both new and old that are with the partnership. So for now, we will start off with the Health Enhancement Program. 
aka HEP. So this program saves on long-term costs by emphasizing preventative care and managing chronic conditions. The success of this program within the state and partnership has caused it to become a national model for preventive care. An added benefit besides being healthy is that members save on out-of-pocket costs for preventive services. Now, as a reminder, HEP is reinstated for 2021, meaning that members will need to be HEP compliant by December 31st, 2021. Members can check their HEP status in the HEP portal. CMSI, AKA WellSpark, will resume their regular communications to members um, as well. So either way, members will know which requirements they need to fill by the end of the year. Nextly, we have the Health Navigator. It is a tool available to members by phone, web, and online messenger chat to help anyone on the partnership plan navigate their health benefits, including finding networks of distinction, answering questions about benefits, whether they're medical, pharmacy, dental, and troubleshooting problems. And this resource is available to anyone enrolled on the partnership plan. So whether it's an employee, their spouse, or a dependent. All right, so for those of you who don't know what a network of distinction is, the plan is contracting with providers, hospitals, and medical groups for episodes of care, which include one price from evaluation to recovery. These locations and providers meet superior patient quality standards, which helps avoid expensive complications. There are over 200 provider groups for over 20 procedures and members going for one of these procedures may be eligible for cash incentives for choosing one of these high quality locations. More details can be found on Care Compass or through Health Navigator. Next, we have Upswing Health. It's an online service to diagnose or treat orthopedic injuries from minor aches like a back spasm or pulled muscle to something more serious that would require surgery and recovery. Members can connect with health coaches and physical therapists for free at home treatment options. This program can also help members avoid ER visits by immediately taking care of acute and minor injuries. Lastly, we do have Lavongo. So Lavongo is a free program to help members manage their diabetes. Members will receive a free connected glucose meter, testing strips and lens sets to their home. If glucose levels become out of range, real-time coaching is available. Again, this is a voluntary program that members can join if they would like additional help managing their diabetes. Now, with that being said, that's it for me, and I will now pass it off to Betsy. Oh, Betsy, I think you're on mute. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am, I am the Marketing Communication Representative for the Healthcare Policy and Benefits Services Division. I'm happy to inform you about the communications that we send to your members. Next slide, please. So I'm hoping you're all getting familiar with the Care Compass brand logo. This is our state's benefit home. It is the image that you will see on all the communications that go out to you um, as administratively, as well as to the members that regard their, their benefits. So the Care Compass logo um, oversees both the state health plan and the Connecticut partnership plan. So in within those, those plans, we, all, we offer all the communications for the Health Navigator, the Health Enhancement Program, Upswing Health, Network of Distinction, Lavongo, and more that Alex just shared with you. So what you'll see in these communications is the logo of the Care Compass and the Office of State Comptroller. So next slide, please. So when you go to Care Compass or if you go directly to the partnership website, this is the website you can link from Care Compass. And you can see, I know in the chat, some folks have asked about the website is listed on this page. On this website, you can go directly to Health Navigator. Again, another great plan feature that Alex referenced um, for help with benefits. So all your members and their dependents can reach Health Navigator um, by phone or by the web. And also on this website, the members can view their weights. They can see their benefit summaries. 
and they can access all documents and forms that they need regarding their benefits. Next slide, please. Another feature is we like to communicate with the members about the program. So again, with Upswing Health and Health Navigator, uh, Network of Distinction, these are all great programs that can sometimes get out of site for our members. So we frequently send out communications and we do this through um, the partnership group shares with the admin of each plan. So they will share with their members and you can be done in many ways. We share in emails. We also share on PDF one page that can be posted or saved so that our members can reach them as they wish. In addition, we also have a, a Facebook presence. So all the plan members can access information through their Facebook and that helps reach a lot of the dependents as well. And it's just a, another way of us being able to highlight the features and the ways to access these great plan features. And lastly, we also offer opportunity if there's any special event or for your group that you'd like to have communications shared, we can create those for you. And so with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Bernie. All right, thank you very much, Betsy. Uh, so what's new for this upcoming plan year? On the next slide, we'll go into our total care uh, GHMO plan, which is our new option, uh, dental option from Cigna. We are rolling out a new DHMO option on July 1st of 2021 to our members. It has the lowest premiums of the dental options and features the same DHMO network with over 700 Connecticut dentists. It also covers orthodontia, braces, exams and routine care, periodontics, simple restorations or fillings, oral surgery and more. There are no annual deductible or calendar year maximums for members. The major change is that it's moving from a copay plan to a coinsurance plan. This total care DHMO plan will be replacing the current copay DHMO plan for new groups starting in July. Current groups who offer the DHMO plan will have the option of keeping their plan or moving to the new one. Within the next couple days, I will be reaching out to those groups uh, individually via email with the plan design rates and deadlines. Next page. Uh, beginning in 2022, the state will be offering the state Blue Care Prime POS, uh, excuse me, Prime Plus POS plan, which is also administered by Anthem to partnership groups. This plan has lower premiums and also features a smaller network where each provider has met high quality standards for care. Members work directly with their primary care providers to find additional care in their network. It has all the same features and programs of your current plan design, including HEP. We will be reaching out to groups later in the year with more information on this plan and how to enroll. And last slide. Uh, questions. Um, if you have any questions, please use the chat function and we will be happy to respond. I know that some have already used those, um, but if you have any questions about this presentation or something we may not have covered, um, please go ahead and use that chat, uh, chat function. Uh, I hope you found this informational session helpful. And again, I want to thank you for joining. Thank you, Bern. And this is Tracy Salili. I um, work with Bernie um, and the partnership team at the Comptroller's office. I'll be um, fielding the questions in the chat function. As you can see, our moderators are busy um, answering them as they come in. Um, and I guess we could just go through some of the ones because there are some good questions out here already. Um, how have COVID expenses changed the dynamics of the plan moving forward? and associated costs of the same. What is the impact to the state and towns? Ray Ellen, do you want to just talk through your answer um, in the chat box? Sure thing, Tracy. Sorry about that. That mute button gets me every time. 
So um, as we can all expect, we had a very serious decline in utilization uh, in 2020. So that has produced utilizing the trend that we're looking out for at about 6% for medical and pharmacy in fiscal year 2022, very favorable rates. We've actually just received those rates from our actuaries hot off the press within the past 24 hours. So Bernie and Alex are very quickly working on getting all of those renewal notices out to everyone. You should have them shortly. Mute button's getting me now. Thank you, Ray Ellen. Um, and then there was another question here about, um, let's see, how is the network of distinction different from an HMO of yesteryear? Um, so Ray Ellen did put a um, answer in the um, chat box function, but I wanted to see if Tom Woodruff, our director, had anything to add as it relates to the ongoing discussions that you're having with providers. Yes, hi. Um, the it's it's really not the same <clears throat> same thing at all. Um, basically, we we uh, go through claims data and and negotiations with provider groups and make this uh, distinction by uh, providing financial incentives to our members to actually go to the higher quality, lower cost providers. Um, they still have access to all the other providers in the state. We just provide an incentive for people to go to the higher quality uh, providers. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we currently have about 2,700 providers um, who are participating in our uh, episode of care uh, program and of those about 1700 have been designated as part of the network of distinction. Great, thank you so much, Tom. OK, so there's a lot of questions about the PowerPoint and sending it out after, and we will share that on um, the partnership website, which is also in the chat function. So, um, and if there's any questions, Bernie can also distribute it to folks as well. Um, let's see. They're coming in fast and furious, bear with me. Can you please explain about the non-HEP fees waived for employees not in compliance. So let me just take that one just to clarify. So um, for, for the 2019 HEP compliance year, um, it was put the, the penalty which would have been implemented in 2020 was put on hold as well as requirements for the calendar year 2020. If you were previously or had an employee who was previously in a non-compliant status for a prior year, then they would still um, be paying the um, penalty until they came into compliance. And they can feel free to contact Care Management Solutions uh, with any questions as it relates to that. So we will be re-implementing the HEP requirements for the 2021 calendar year. So we're encouraging folks to go out and get their preventive care completed. Okay. <clears throat> so there are some general questions about where to find information. Um, and again, there, you can always contact the partnership team um, that we do have a dedicated website um, and uh, the email or the web address is osc.ct.gov backslash ct partner. Um, also there is a question about the DHMO providers. So um, you can actually look up providers in the DHMO network on the um, actually Ray Ellen popped in the website for the dedicated state of Connecticut lookup tool. So it's stateofconnecticut.cigna.com slash find a dentist. Okay, let me see if there's any new questions. Okay, how does SPP determine a provider is high quality or of distinction? So Tom, I think that would be a good question um, for you.
Are you on mute? You're on mute. We have two different levels in the program. The first is the network of distinction. And what we look for there are um, avoidable, actionable events, or in other words, complications. So we look up at how often um, the, let's say it's a knee, uh, knee replacement, how often there are complications and how costly are those comp, uh, complications. And those go into the first cut at quality and that qualifies them for network of distinction. We are currently working with uh, those providers to see if they qualify for the next level, which is a center of excellence, by actually looking at clinical outcomes data and patient reported outcomes. And that, uh, that'll be uh, later in the year, we'll start designating those, higher, uh, those highest quality providers. You're on mute, uh, Tracy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, let's just have a process where the last one talking reminds the next one to go off mute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. Um, so regarding the COVID adjustment on next year's rate proje projection, Rayel, do you kind of want to just talk through that? Sure thing. So yes, our actuaries have done a very deep dive into utilization practices over the past year, but they've also taken into consideration the anticipated increase in utilization moving forward, especially when it relates to preventive care and elective um, surgeries and procedures that folks may have put off over the prior year. So that all has been included in the trend that's built forward in the rates that are forthcoming. Thank you. Um, here is a HEP question regarding a new group that was effective 1121. Does the HEP 1231 deadline apply to us? I thought we were told it did not. So it actually it does. So it the the status is as of the first of the year. Um, so because you joined January 1st, your employees will have all of this year to meet compliance. Um, if you have concerns over that, you know, please feel free to contact Bernie and we can talk through um, just because I know the decision to um, re-implement HEP was actually um, being discussed early this year. So um, we're happy to work with you on that and support you in, you know, any way we can. Okay. Here's a question. Given the recent years of positive MLR, where are the experience surpluses directed? Are they held in a specific stabilization reserve for the SPP or are they directed elsewhere, state employee plan or general fund? So um, let's see, Raylan, do you wanna take that? Sorry, you were, you were typing quicker than I could read the question. <laughs> I was, I was quickly typing that one and actually I'm going to post another question that's just come in at the same time um, and answer both together because I think they're very much related. We have a question related to the loss ratio and what it means to the cost of the plan. So all of the accounting for the state partnership plan is kept completely separate from all active employees and retirees accounting strings. So all of the funds coming in and going out are 100% separated from state funds. They're never commingled together. That includes all premiums coming in and all claims and premium payments going out. So with that said, the surpluses that have been coming through with the preferable MLR, MLR that we've had over the past few years are held in surplus in reserve in those set accounts. We have factored in to the rates an ongoing reserve factor to um, ensure that we have a healthy reserve available to us should anything happen and we had to access those funds. So when developing the rates, we take into account the trend for anticipated utilization and spend for the coming year. We also take into account the gain and loss ratio from the prior year. And lastly, we take into account what are the values of those accounts that I spoke to before, those surplus reserve accounts. We want to keep everything tied together and in balance. So we set the rates knowing where we need the reserve to be, what our loss and gain ratio was for the prior year, and what our spend is looking to be for the coming year. I hope that helps. 
Yes, thank you so much, Raelyn. And then there was a question regarding whether referrals are needed um, in the, I think it was the Prime Plus POS. That's correct, Tracy. The question is with regard to the Blue Care Prime Plus POS. Okay, so yes, that referrals are required in that plan. So there will be more information as we roll that out to um, partnership groups. Um, but the point in that plan is um, utilizing primary care doctor to um, navigate your health care and steer you and your members to high quality performing doctors. Um, the, the great thing about that plan is that you also have an option to use a, a, any doctor within Anthem's network or out of network. You would just have a slightly different coinsurance. Tom, did you want to add anything there? Yeah, so just to be clear, um, we our intent is for 2022 to offer this as an option. You don't have to take that plan option. It, it's a lower cost option, uh, but that would be up to each group to decide whether you want to offer that uh, plan option. And let's see. Will you be able? OK, so here let's see. There's another question on the loss ratio. Based on the loss ratio answer is 97% good, does not seem to leave much admin slash reserve based on the loss ratio ratio answer. Um, so I don't know it. Do you want to talk through that Ray Ellen or um, I don't know if Josh or Tom have anything to add there. With regard to how the loss ratio, you know, Im impacts the the amount that we're setting for reserve. Sure, um, I'll well, take. Oh, go ahead, Tom. No, I was just going to say that we we basically plan on having at least 45 days of reserve and we have very low admin costs because of the state um, administration fees. So um, it really doesn't concern us as long as we know we have adequate uh, IBNR reserves. You took the words right out of my mouth, Tom. That's exactly right. The 97% rate is good. We have all of those items and considerations built into the rates as it is. Okay, thanks to you both. Um, just <clears throat> going to see if there's any new questions. So at the moment, I don't think we have any new questions, but we will give it a few moments here. Um, let's see. So again, just a reminder, if you had any additional questions, please um, pop them in the chat function and we will answer them live. Tracy, can I just say one thing about the, the towns that, that are in Fairfield County? Sure, yep, definitely. So so we realized that this year uh, there was, you know, the final year of phasing in uh, the county based adjustments. Um, but simultaneously, we're working very hard in Fairfield County to negotiate these episodes of care with physician groups because we found that, for instance, in orthopedics in, in Fairfield County, on average, your costs are way higher than the rest of the state. But by looking at physician first, we found that with a number of groups uh, that have produced high quality, they're actually uh, producing results below the statewide average. So we're working very hard with a large number of groups in the county, uh, as well as throughout the state, to reduce costs. And if, uh, if those costs change the uh, uh, weighting by county, we'll make those adjustments in the future. So we think that uh, this year was the last year of phasing that in. We're looking forward to uh, lower trends uh, going forward in the future. Okay.
So we just got one new question. Um, what should controllers in Fairfield County budget in for the next fiscal year? So actually we will be um, following up shortly after the meeting within the next couple of days um, with the rate action for the next year. So um, rather than, you know, talk through an estimate, we will be getting that out to you directly in the next few days. Um, let's see, EAP or, okay. Oh, and Ray Allen put that in. Is the partnership about any of employee assistance programs? EAP services are not currently covered um, within the partnership plan. We actually have a separate vendor for our state employee health plan for that. Um, so Raylan popped that answer in and I'm trying to see if we have, yeah, it doesn't look like we have any um, additional questions coming in. Oh, here we go. Here's one. Um, want to give support to those participants who were not in compliance and paying the penalty when COVID hit. Should they get a reprieve since they too did not want to go to the doctors and dentists during COVID? Um, so the thought process there, um, to be honest, was that there was this, the the non-compliance was was for a time period prior to COVID, um, so that the expectation was that they they could have gone during that time period when the compliance was for. Um, and one of the things, the factors that we had looked into um, in re-implementing the uh, HEP requirements was that there is availability to do telehealth um, in an effort to um, get people back into compliance. So even if they were missing, say, a physical, they could um, have a telehealth visit with their doctor and still be able to um, get back into compliance. So again, if you have a specific concern, please contact Care Management Solutions and um, they're, they're happy to help. Um, let's see. Okay. I think that was the last question um, that has come in. So um, what we can do is just give it another minute and then what, what we generally do is we'll end the, uh, the live meeting but leave the chat function open and several of us will um, you know, be here to still answer the questions in the chat function even after the um, presentation ends. So I'll say another 30 seconds or so, and then we will um, end the live session. Oh, here's a question from Steve Scholl. How close to the estimated rates released in January and February are the final rates that are to be released? Um, Bern, do you want to talk through that? Do you? Yeah, uh, are they are they are pretty close, uh, a little bit better. Um, and and like Tracy said, we're going to be getting those rate letters out. You know, it's just we have to do 140 plus. Uh, so we, we will definitely get those out to you as soon as we can. OK, great. Thank you, Bern. Sure. OK, let's see. So again, um, I guess I'll just reiterate, uh, thank you for joining today. Thank you for your partnership and entrusting us to administer these benefits for um, your municipalities, boards of eds and, and employees alike. Um, we've seen this partnership plan grow um, tremendously over the past few years and um, we are always here. The team is here to support you in any, anything you need. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, we did publish Bernie's direct contact info, which I'm sure most of you have as well. So um, again, thank you for joining today and we will be staying online uh, for several minutes just to um, answer questions in the chat function.